Hello and welcome to the Friday, September 16th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today wrote up a somewhat unusual, if not new, trick employed by attackers creating malicious Word documents. The trick is something, well, that you may have seen in HTML, and that's iframes and frame sets. This feature, turns out, is supported by Word as well, just needs to be enabled as it's not used in typical Word documents and also not necessarily visible. In this case, the frame set was used to hide a malicious RTF document by including it as part of a frame. And that sort of works similar to what you may be used to from HTML, where the frame tag then just includes the URL the document is downloaded from. Similar here, you just have that resource ID and it will then download the actual, in this case, malicious document from that remote URL. The attacker also used some basic obfuscation techniques. The IP address is expressed using a long integer format. And then the URL, well, kind of looks like Morse code. It's lots of dots and dashes kind of to obfuscate the URL a little bit. Xavier, of course, went further and looked at what's being downloaded here. And ultimately, what you're ending up with here is Redline Info Stealer. As always, Xavier walks you through the process. So if you have a similar document to analyze, should be helpful to have him show you how the analysis actually was conducted. And we do have what may be an exploit for the IPv6 IPsec vulnerability that was patched this patch Tuesday. CVE 2022-34721. It was the vulnerability that I pointed out as having quite a bit of potential. It's vulnerable. It gets you system access with a single packet, but likely not a huge set of vulnerable targets given that it needs, at least according to my Microsoft's description, IPv6 and IPsec. Now, I would like to add a cautionary note here. I have not yet run the exploit against a vulnerable system. So basically, I haven't verified if the exploit actually does what's supposed to do. This is a proof of concept exploit, and it's supposed to just crash vulnerable systems. I'm quite certain it's not sort of a simple prank exploit. Doesn't appear to do anything malicious other than crashing that remote system. It does use IPv4. In Microsoft's description, it talks about IPv6. Not sure if that was done sort of on purpose here uh, by uh, the person releasing this exploit. Um, that's why it's a proof of concept. The exploit sends an IC header with a fragment, not a normal IP fragment, but a Cisco fragment that uh, can be used uh, with sort of these type of uh, packets. According to the person posting the exploit, again, it only crashes the vulnerable system. The reason I think it is a plausible exploit is that this is of the type of vulnerability that we often see in these uh, protocols. Also, the exploit was posted by 78 Research Lab on GitHub. 78 Research Lab is a Korean uh, security uh, company or group of security researchers, and uh, they have released exploits uh, for Ike and such in the past. So uh, that gives it a little bit credibility here. Well, when was the last time that you checked that your version of Putty is legit? Mandiant is reporting how North Korean attackers are using Trojanite versions of the Windows SH client Putty to breach corporate networks. And the attacks are uh, quite targeted. Uh, it starts out with a fake job offer apparently being presented via WhatsApp. Now, not sure if I would sort of trust or even respond to a random job offer via WhatsApp, but uh, apparently people are responding and then they're being invited essentially to sort of a 
skill demonstration slash interview where they're being given an ISO file which then includes the modified version of PuTTY that they're being asked to use in order uh, to solve some uh, challenges. Ultimately, the victim ends up with a backdoored system and of course no job offer. Maybe not even a job at a company they currently work at. This type of attack could be successful, of course, in a targeted sort of attack. And that's exactly what Mannion is describing here, where they're sending uh, these messages uh, to IT workers and such that may be open to a new job offer. I finally also uh, got a couple of bugs and patches you probably should hear about before the weekend. Uh, Bitdefender is reporting about a number of vulnerabilities in EasyVis smart cameras that can be used uh, to take over affected devices. Updates are available from the vendor. And Lenovo released BIOS updates for a wide range of its desktops and laptops. So again, check if your BIOS is up to date. Don't even worry about looking at that list. Uh, Maybe there's some other uh, updates for your particular system if it's not on that list for the latest and greatest uh, vulnerabilities. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. And as usual, if you like this podcast, please let your friends know, uh, post on social media, leave a review on your favorite podcast site. I do it because people are listening to it. So uh, you know, always helps if we have a growing audience here. Thanks and any feedback as always is welcome. If there's any stories I missed or so, uh, please uh, let me know. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.